Hey everyone, Tim here from National Forces Massage. This is Lainey, one of our receptionists. You can say hi. Hey. Here's the back <laughs> side of her. Today we're going to do show a lot of different side lying massage techniques. Okay, and we're going to start with the neck. So if you come on this side, Caitlin. Caitlin's our videographer. So you'll see she goes a little bit of a dodger's hump through here. Um, a lot of it could have been caused she got in a car accident, broke her neck, all sorts of things, you know, going on in there. Thank God she's still alive, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I apologize. My hands are cold. So we're going to do a lot of uh, detailed neck work. And I don't know what exercises the doctor gave you, but... I would, I would do a lot of um, chin tucking exercises you can you know, do where you kind of, you can put like a towel on the back of your head and put your arms in front and pull back and that will help readjust that a little bit, reline it back up. First thing, we're just warming it up. Now I, if I don't have, make sure I don't have any lotion on my hand, left hand, I'm going to lift her head up. And put it down. All right. One thing good about side lying, you'll be able to get to the SCM muscle, also known as sternocleidomastoid. I expect you to memorize that. Okay. Right, but first, we're going to go into the anterior scaling, right through here. Might be a little tender. And so I like being having my left hand under her head, just so I can kind of control the movement. Any of that feels too much pain, or you get anything shooting, let me know. See, actually, when I come this way, you'll see right above that we got the SEM muscle. So this, I like to work this one first, work down each vertebrae. Are you holding your head up? <laughs> Feels like you're holding your head up a little. You're just helpful. <laughs> Does it hurt? Feel good? Indifferent? Indifferent, yeah. Okay. Kind of walking my way down the vertebrae a little bit. Can tell there's a lot of damage in there, though. Do you get a headache? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of this, you know, working along the occipital ridge through there, releasing through the neck through here will help with those headaches. We can't do that in one massage, but if you do a hooking position like this, you can hook the spine right there. I'm going to push and pull. This should actually feel pretty good. benefits of working here you get massages <laughs> a lot of my clients would be jealous right now so. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> how are we doing good is any of this hurting no okay not more than it already does <laughs> okay not more than it already does so you can uh, now she, she's so helpful she just wants to hold it up since she is trying to hold it up, I actually like this technique. Go ahead and hold your head up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be able to feel this muscle tense up right through here. I like to kind of grip a little bit. Don't go in front where they feel like you're choking them. And you're going to have them look up. You may have a better angle if you come towards me. And then look down on it. SCM right here. Gripping the SCM. If you're scared to do it this way, you don't feel like you're getting choked, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Her whole body's twitching. Another way, if you're scared that way, you can lay your thumb in this position. Have you look up, kind of work 
work it out like that. How's that feeling? You okay? Mm -hmm. I could probably spend a whole hour on her neck. <laughs> Just kidding, I wouldn't do that to her neck, but. Well, one of the neck work for her, I'd, like, I'd rather do face up. And we'll do the opposite shoulder way down. I'm just going to flex it. And some of the anterior neck muscles, they actually go into the clavicle, so you want to go all the way down. It's loosened up already, I don't know if you can tell. But. So a lot of times, what happens when this gets real tight, it's going to pull this and we have a lot of the um, if people do a lot of computer work, you'll notice they kind of go forward with their head like that, which is over lengthening this. So what we want to do is strengthen the neck through here, and that would actually help pull that back, which would also in turn help the headaches, assuming it's more muscular related. All right, now we're going to get into some of the traps and levature. Levitator scapula, if I even said that right. I don't I did not say that right. It's levator. <laughs> it should be levitator though. So a little push and pull. Alright. Make sure you I like to grip my other hand so that I have more control. And then I like to be on this side so I can't see them cry. I'm kidding. How's that feel right there? Good. If you want a little bit of an active release, I'm going to have you shrug your shoulder up towards my elbow. Hold it and release. Yeah, I was taking a 10 minute video and I can, I'm telling you, I could do Oh, like an hour. <laughs> and again, relax. Now she mentioned getting a little um, pains when she brings her arm up. <clears throat> What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you come up about this hair and then rotate in and then out. So the triangle right here that you'll, you'll know where the bones, you come sink right in the middle and get right to where the supraspinatus is. That's one of my clients called it the supraspinach. Can't make this stuff up. All right. now. Raise your arm up a little, right there. Now try to rotate it, and go towards your back a little bit more. No, I mean, bring your whole arm towards your back. There you go. And she's like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Keep rotating. And down. Is that real tender? Mm -hmm. Again, see how... I like to put one thumb on top of the other just to help protect my own thumb. And down. The reason I only have her going about 30 degrees up is because I'm not trying to activate the deltoid as much as I'm trying to activate the supraspinatus. Once you go higher, you tend to activate the deltoid. And Caitlin, let's go come on this side. Now you can actually say hi to the camera lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull her arm down. I like to cup right through here. 
here with my form. Make sure I have good mechanics. Let me glide our way. I'm not putting super hard pressure downward. Is that feeling you okay? Mm -hmm. Right where that occipital ridge, right in here, that real tender. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one's okay though. You can. I'll show y'all what I'm doing in a minute. And relax. So I'm putting my elbow right around this area. Also good for migraines. See how I'm kind of rotating my arm as I go down. Also, you can kind of pull their arm. Just don't pull their wrist as much. I try to do their arm. Side. All right, we're gonna, now we're going to bring her arm up. I'm going to hold it just like this. It's going to give a good lat stretch in there. If I really want to stretch the lat, I can come under here. Link elbows. You feel that? Mm -hmm. It's really good to work under the shoulder blade too. Look at the subscaps right through here, subscapularis, some of the lat that runs up through there. It's either going to tickle or be painful. Not too painful though, I'm not going to torture you in here. And then rotate. And from what you said, you went through this. This is that. So, as you can see where I'm at, I'm under the shoulder blade, hitting those pressure points with my thumb, and then I'm in turn rotating the shoulder. Is that tender? Oh, yeah. Not too bad. Is that tickle? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I normally like to use my forearm through here when they do it when they're face down. She's a massage therapist dream. So many trigger points that are active. Here's a good one. Feel that one? Mm -hmm. Right on that rotator cuff. One thing when you do a, when I do a stretch, I like to make them activate that muscle. So when I pull, I want you to pull against it like a pull down. There you go. And let it go. And again, let it go. Good. And then with her arm up here, Caitlin, will you walk around the other side? Gonna move into some hip work and QL muscle. The hip bone right, right through here, pelvic bone. I want to put my forearm through there. And I'm gonna try to get right under the the bone. You feel tender? Not too bad. And right now I'm kind of right in this section of their QL. Tender right in there. You can come on this side if you need. Right through here. Now remember their diaphragm is really important. So take a deep breath in. You maintain pressure as a therapist while they're breathing in. 
and we're left. And then I'm going to work back towards the lower back. It feels usually it feels pretty good on this one. My elbow's getting closer to their, um, their sacrum on the other side. Deep breathing. Remember, the deep breathing is not so they don't pass out. It's so that we can open their diaphragm. But as my forearm's crushing her, I'm sure it's hard to take that deep breath in. <laughs> He's a good sport. All right, next. I'm going to bring your knees up. All right, we're going to relax that now. I'm going to drink some guava before, before showing the audience to make sure I'm <laughs> drinking well. Now you can come around. Now with on the lower back, it's good to get on right through here on the by the sacrum. That's this shows where my elbow was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need a, a landmark. But you know, being a person with lower back issues, I like to work right in through here. Real Try not to push her off the table. <laughs> Active releases actually get right. If you find one of those real tender sp spots, get right in here, but not too tender. I think she's out. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually have them bend their knee up towards their face. So, Laney, if you bring your knee towards your head, and then you maintain the pressure as it goes, and then go down. And if she wanted, you can wor work your way down the spine that way. And she could even tuck down with her head, too, if needed. And then come on this side of me, Caitlin. Normally, I'll, un you know, I'm going to bring your knees up higher. There you go. Normally, I would un you know, actually work under the sheet, working away from the, the sacrum. Since we're on YouTube, I'm going to show you all over the sheet. So it's good to get right where that sacrum is, along the bone, each way through. Straight downward pressure. How are you doing? I don't know what huh means. I don't know. <laughs> He's medium. wanted to do an active release, I would have her bring her knee up towards the ceiling. Like this way? Up towards the ceiling, yep. And go down while that maintain pressure. See? And then work your way down. You can even hit the piriformis. It's great for sciatic issues. Raise up. And down. And up. Down. Good. I'm going to finish with two stretches. Um, the first one's a, a good hip flexor um, quad stretch. I'm going to borrow this right leg. For a second, I didn't know if it was right. I don't know why. All right. I, I like to put their, their foot like on my hip. And I'll hold under their knee until I got a good um, grip. And I'll put my palm right where the sit bone is. And then I'm going to lean back while holding their foot towards me. And then do you feel that? Mm -hmm.
Can you resist the movement a little bit? Pull against it. Go ahead. And let go. If you're a smaller person holding them in this position, you may want to tell them maybe only resist about 20%. Otherwise, you might fly on the table. <laughs> and again, go ahead and resist it. And relax. And the only time I don't want to do this is if their SI joint or their lower back is getting in pain. You feel that all in the front? Mm -hmm. Knees up one more time. All right, this time, Caitlin, I'm going to have to have you on the other side. So, this next thing I learned in a, a continuing education class myself, I really like it. It's a range of motion exercise. So, what you want to do is have them hold their arm here. So, hold it there. And you turn your head and look at your hand. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand on their sacrum right through here. And then, do you see where my hand is? Over here? Mm -hmm. Can you turn your head a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and touch my hand with your head. Uh, with your head. <laughs> touch my hand with your hand. Good. And relax. So we're looking more for this movement, okay? So go ahead again. Turn your head. You notice how our head doesn't want to go with it. This helps teach a range of motion. It shows the brain that this movement's safe. And then as you keep doing it, they'll get better and better. Go back. And again, way over here now. See how good she did that? And then I'll even usually have them push against my hand. So push down. And then take a deep breath in. There's way too many different directions at the same time. And relax. Did you feel the stretch in your chest as well on that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. You can also, I will show you, you can also push against their hip downward. So it's kind of like put that pelvic bone. Here, I said two stretches. This is the third one, I know. But pull against it and then I can tell, tell me when. Tell me when. Real good for the chest. Mm -hmm. Okay. 